Wishbone. Wishbone Entertainment. Today we got one of the Bay Area pioneers, real deal though. You real feel legends. me? Untold Stories episode six. You feel me? You didn't seen all of them, but you ain't seen this one yet. I'm ends with the lens. It's your boy Pet Mendo. Man, today we got where J Diggs at? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking right, West Bath. Yes, What's sir. Up? J Diggs, bro. So originally you from Vallejo, right? We have 707 on mines. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Better know it. How long you been making music, bro? Um. Professionally making music since uh, 2002. That's when my first album dropped. Both sides of the gate, 2002. Okay, okay. So however long that is, huh. was that almost 20 years? Yeah, that's a, yeah. That's a minute. That's like uh, 18 years. Yeah. Then, right? Yeah. And I was a late bloomer. Okay. But yeah. So originally it wasn't always part of the plan, right? I mean, you know, it was always a passion. It was okay. always a passion. But um, it got curved. It got curved young. It got curved young. I went to prison young 18 years old so I, for for a minute that dream was put on hold i wasn't even tripping right i wasn't tripping on rapping I was right, like, right. Fuck. but then by the time i got out of prison it was like that's all i can do like i'm right. gonna right. do it i'm not gonna get no job right. now i just did 10 years and right. shit what'd you do Rap 10 years shit for better work. uh <clears throat> conspiracy to commit armed bank robbery Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so that was my young nigga movement. Uh, <laughs> Unsolved Mysteries. Time, yeah, man. Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, he was on Unsolved Mysteries. Right? Yeah, that, yeah, that aired in 90, 91. It aired on the episode of Unsolved Mysteries in 1991. We was kids tearing shit up. So what did you feel like when you seen, when, when you seen that clip of, on Unsolved Mysteries? Oh, you know what? It's crazy, right? So, <laughs> so, so let me tell you that story. So let me tell you that story, okay? So so they had all the robberies going on in, in, in the Bay Area at the time, right? And nobody really knew who who, who was doing it outside our crew. You know, uh -huh. our crew, um, we was tearing shit up. It was just, it was, it was, at the time, it was prior to banks. It was, we was hitting pizza parlors, hotels, bridges. We was hitting all kind of shit. <laughs> so, but uh, the pizza parlors was the big deal that they was making. So everybody had knew that Unsolved Mysteries was coming to our city, Vallejo, to film. Mm -hmm. So everybody was talking about it. So... We was like, okay, this motherfucking shit is it it getting kind of hot. So the day um, they had came out there, they, they filmed and everything. Everybody was talking about it. So it was airing. The day was supposed to be airing. And I had forgot it was even finna come on. And I had I had left the neighborhood and I went to my mom's house. I didn't live with my mom. I used to go over there all the time. So I, I went into, when I walked into my mom's house, she was like, oh, Jamal, come in here, come in here. They got the unsolved mysteries on with the with the dudes doing the bank robbery. <laughs> so when she said that shit, like my heart stopped. Like, who? What the fuck you talking about? Yeah. It's like I'm like, hold yeah. up. So yeah. I come in the living room and it's on. You know, they got the unsolved mystery music yeah. and all that shit. So they doing the shit. So I'm standing there and I'm watching it. And out of nowhere, here's a clip, a live clip. It was from a um Hercules, California. It was a, a round table bank robbery. So the live clip in slow motion while they talking, here I come running into the clip, Damn. into the bank robbery. Mind you, I'm standing next to my mom. My mom's sitting on the couch watching. I'm looking. I got on a, a jumpsuit and I got on a ski mask. Actually, it was a white ski mask, matter of fact. But I'm looking. I noticed me. I know the whole lick. I did the lick. So while I'm looking at this shit, to me, I don't even see myself with a mask. I just see my body, my yeah. whole shape. Yeah. And I'm running up in, and my, my palms start sweating, and I'm, I'm looking at my mom, and she looking like she watching a movie. I'm uh -huh. like, oh, my God. My heart beating hella fast. I'm like, dude, is she going to recognize me? Yeah, like, yeah. dude, she... But man. she didn't catch it right then. Mm -hmm. But that was 
throw me the fuck off, bro. That scared the shit out of me. Like, I really watched the Unsolved Mysteries clip with my mom, my dad, I think my sister was in there. Everybody was watching. That's nice. But at that time, nobody knew that it was me, especially a live clip of it. Like, I was like, oh, shit. Uh, this shit was real. That's man. Yeah, so yeah, that was that was that was one of, that was one of the debut. Right. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a crazy experience. Was there always a strategy how you used to hit like the pizza parlors and shit like that? Or is it you just run up in there and you feel me? I mean, it, it was I mean of course you gotta always put together a cool plan. But um that shit was that shit was you know, that was easy. That was really light work. Right. So yeah, we, we you know, and what our thing was our crew, our crew was 10, 11 niggas. So we used to break down to two to three people. My favorite person he licks with was Kilo. That was that's my little cousin, a little fuck fast bastard. He's quick over counters, all the shit. So I was like, "Come on, Kilo, me and you, me and Kilo used to fuck shit up." So um, yeah, that's that, and that's really the whole thing about licks and anything else. You gotta find somebody you got chemistry with. You know, somebody you like. You feel they the way they move. Okay, I know he gonna hit the counter. He know that I'm gonna hold this motherfucker down, and we gonna get this bread and get the fuck up out of here. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's you know it, it's just about planning, just having your shit tight. It was it was always certain shit that we did, but it's crazy about it because that's that you know if you ever heard the word mo, and, and that's what we did. We created a federal mo that kind of made it easy for them to convict us afterwards mm -hmm. because we was doing the same shit. Right. Like we was young, you know what I mean? Like when they when, when it finally came down to the time when they when they uh was bringing up all the evidence on us, they was bringing all these pictures in from all these different bank robbers in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. But every time you had these pictures. They had black and white pictures, but you would see a big ass Nike sign mm -hmm. on the shoes. Mm -hmm. So they had finally figured out that these dudes was wearing Nike Cortezes, mm -hmm. which was our signature shoe back in that time. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at all the pictures and the different bank robbers, and you seeing the same fucking Nike shoes on different dudes. So that was one of the MOs that we had left that they was putting into a database. Another one was the mask that we were using. We was work, we was doing a certain kind of mask that we was using, you know, instead of full face, the full ski masks, mm -hmm. we would get beanie hats, like regular regular ski, um, regular um, hats, yeah. regular hats, and then we would cut them on the inside and stretch them out, so you make it one layer. So okay. once you made it one layer, you could pull it over your face and you could see out. You didn't need no holes. Okay, okay. So then yeah. we would tie a, hole, a knot at the top. Well, this eventually being uh, in the feds that became known as romp masses mm. because they were finding, they were having these bank robberies. And after every bank robbery, they were finding certain shit. They would find these masks. There was a certain way that didn't have no eye holes on them. So they were finding them at different places. Mm. Here it was. It was another MO. We was leaving MOs. Cortez, mask. Mask, yeah. yeah. Mac 11, something else. They was out back then. Um, the Max was real popular. Mm -hmm. Mac 11s and AP 9s was real popular as we youngsters. Uh, we had them, and they same thing on camera. All the videos they having this Mac 11s mm -hmm. and these AP 9 type weapons. So they was gathering all this in the database and all this MO, hoodies, all the shit. Mm -hmm. Everything was every bank robbery. They can pretty much match another bank robbery with the same description. Look at these Nike shoes. Mm -hmm. the, the Look at these hoods. Good. Look at these semi-automatic weapons. Whether the bank robbery was in Richmond, Vallejo, Oakland, Fremont, wherever it was, mm -hmm. it still was coming back that these dudes are somehow matched with each other. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we was living. We left a cold mo for for a, over a year and a half worth of robberies uh, that was putting them on the trail. What's the most you ever hit for? Uh like for even a bank or or the, or the parlors or even the uh, a bank lick, of course, was the biggest lick, and it was like I think we hit for like one hundred and twenty thousand or something like that. Like anything mm -hmm. about a, a bank lick, like you can hit for more than that, but it's a risk thing, you know no, what I mean? Don't get too greedy. It's a it's a risk thing. Your, your key, our key thing was all we always kept it. We wanted to be in a bank, and now the bank less than two minutes. Right. Anything longer than that, you pretty risk risking it. Mm -hmm. So. You know, the money was there, you can, right. and then, but the biggest thing about it, see, this is where a lot of people fuck up at. They got all that money in banks, but then they plant shit in the money. They plant tracers, oh, and, they, and they plant what's called die packs. So when you go in there and you grab, you can do this, and put all that shit in a bag, and you're going to run out the bank. As soon as the temperature change from the money, it's going to activate the die pack, and it's going to, and it's going to put this... Pink mm -hmm. ink all over the fucking money, mm -hmm. and it's no good no more. How many? How many of those you run across? I ain't never had one. I had a good okay. friend of mine. He fucked me. <laughs> he, 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 
motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, fucked up. he fucked up about 80,000. Yeah. About 80 cash. Yeah, That's all bad. Right. Like, it was nothing. Couldn't spend a quarter of it. And then there's another thing. They put tracers in the money. So, like, you fucking ran a rival bank. Hit some corners. Think you getting away. And you done got away. And you somewhere counting the money. And while you in the middle of the money, it's a tracker. You like what the fuck is this? Oh, Next thing you know, your whole spot surrounded. Yeah. So you gotta be, you know, you gotta be on to that kind of shit. So right. when it came to getting money, we had we had a, a grab and shake method with us, which meant you grab the money and you shake it before you put it in the bag because the shit used to be in, in between the money. So it's easy to fall out. Yeah, slide oh, okay. right out. Like if yeah. they have a stack of money, it'd be like a stack in a drawer. And they did. They would do it on purpose for bank robbers mm -hmm. and shit. It'd be a stack of money, then it'd be a die pack slid up in between it. So. It, it, most people when they robbed banks they would come in there with notes that's why our style was different mm -hmm. we we did takeover so most people come in they give a note say put the money in the bag <clears throat> so they got the, the shit already planted in there they gonna put the shit okay no problem and they give it to them and then they step outside yeah. the bank and now y'all <laughs> now you gotta go grab yeah. shake put the money in and that way you ever had to get away from the boys? Uh, when are there any close calls? Like you all get in get get yeah, out of here? Yeah exactly it definitely mm -hmm. had that actually it was um Hercules, California, Hercules bank robbery. Uh, me and Kilo, hmm. me and Kilo came out the bank and um, uh, well, as soon as we came out the bank, the police, it was actually a police officer pulling up into the bank parking lot, but, or he was actually getting out the car, what it was, but he wasn't there for a bank robbery. Really? It was like he was going to the bank, like he was getting out the car. Right. We was coming out of the bank. So when we came out the bank and I seen the police officer, like I instantly whipped out like, oh, and when we when I did that, he kind of like fell behind his car, like he didn't even know what was right, going right, on. Right. Like, what the fuck is going on? Right. And we ran across. It was a shopping mall where they had Safeway and all that shit in Hercules. Then it was a street called Crunchy Run. You run right across the street. It was a big uh, condo complex. So when me and Kilo ran across the street, and when the condo complex, that's where the car was at. So this condo complex was one way in, one way out. So we ran down the hill to the stairs, but to really the, the exit, you had to go like this and okay. come back out. So we jump in the car. So now I got Kilo, I tell him to get down. So now I'm in the car and I'm driving the car out the uh, complex, which is one way. So while I'm coming out, now the police is coming in. He got his lights on and everything. Well, I'm gonna stole the car. So he get about right here and he slow down. And he look over at me. <laughs> I'm driving. I'm trying to <clears throat> yeah, regular. right past him. He look over at me. He kind of slow down like, but he don't know. Sure, yeah. And right. then he kept going and shot into the condo complex. So now I'm coming out of the condo complex. You out of there. I'm out of there. I get to the light oh. to leave Hercules. Right, right. But it's a, it's a, it's a red light. I'm panicking though. I'm right. got to go. So right. I go on the side of the cars and kind of like creep into the traffic a little bit, look both ways. And ran the light. Right. So instead of going Hercules 80 to go out the regular way to 80, I busted up the right and went up to four. I went up to four and went up into Martinez. Mm -hmm. So we get up into Martinez. We jumped out. We went to a hotel, one of the first hotels we seen in Martinez. And when they got a room, we went and got a room and shit. So um, it was crazy because we went and got a room. So I called my homeboy. I called my homeboy to send us a ride. So he... he he had sent his girl, so she could pull up as a white girl. She pulled up in a fucking Delta with rims on it, right, and pick us up. So we stuffed, the, we hid the money in the trunk. We get in the car. This is a D-boy car with a white girl, blind, yeah, driving. We get right on the freeway, and how about this motherfucker ran out of gas in the fast lane. We in a fast lane, so we had to pull over. Like this, in the yeah. middle of the freeway. We're like, oh, no, this didn't just happen. Yeah, yeah, and we just robbed a bank like 45 minutes ago uh -huh. in Hercules. We somewhere in Martinez trying to get on the freeway, and the car runs out of gas. Yeah, like, what the fuck is right. going on? So we in the middle. So now Highway Patrol pulls up behind us. Mind you, 45 minutes after a bank robbery, pulls up behind us. Two black dudes in a car, a white girl driving. He comes, she gets out. I was like, so she gets back there like I ran out of gas so he didn't ever walk all the way up and look in what? she gets in the car with him and leaves I took her to get gas took her to get gas Damn. pulled her back up behind her let her out waited for her to put the gas in get in start the car 
Man, he cuts. That's the most yeah. 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 That's a criminal right there. Actually, that's the story of my book, too. My book, I did. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, we were so scared. Yeah, we were scared. What's the name of your book? Hold on. Oh, yeah, it's coming out. It's oh, okay. Yeah, okay. It's, 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 matter of fact, my book should be released, um, hopefully, by my birthday, which is in January. Released in January, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, And, and okay. The, the movie's coming soon, too? Yeah, the movie, the movie, actually, they, they um... Uh, the company they just did I just signed my rights I just did my life rights for the movie and the book so they just bought my life rights and the book rights to do the movie off of so within a year and a half my movie should be in production A list film we got A list producers and everything yeah, it's yeah, on yeah. so it's a, it's a good look man well, so that's my turn definitely how, how long did that last that run last for for hitting all them them joints um, we, we ran for about probably a little bit over a year a little over a year. We was bought out, bought out as kids. Mm. We was bought out until the informants came in and knocked us off. <laughs> All right. Hell yeah. It was what, good... Where did they send you to when you went down? Uh, my first spot was uh, Terminal Island. Terminal Island, Feds. We all went to the Feds. So I was Terminal Island out in Los Angeles. And then I got caught up in a riot called the Crack Riots. And um, from there, I got what was called Diesel Therapy. And they sent me all over the country. I went from Terminal Island to Lime Park. From Lime Park, PN, I went to Oklahoma. From Oklahoma, I was in Allenwood, Pennsylvania, to Farrington, New Jersey, yeah, to angry. Raybrook, New York, to uh, McKean, Pennsylvania, to Schoolkill, Pennsylvania, like I'm Lewisburg. Yeah, so you yeah, used went, to doing the movie. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. This is what I do. So was there one that you just said, man, fuck this shit. I ain't trying to come back to this specific one because of the conditions or the bullshit you had to deal with? Oh, they had a bunch of, you know, that's one thing about the, the prison system. They got some spots that you don't want to be in. And that's why, a couple places, that's why I got moved because when I get to somewhere that I don't want to be, I'm going to buck the system. I know how to get transferred. I'll slap the shit out of somebody fast. Police officer, where the fuck? And, you know, you get in a certain amount of trouble, they get you the fuck off the yard. Right. So yeah. when you become a convict, you know how to get moved off a yard. Mm -hmm. Beat the shit out of somebody quick. Run it. You damn near notorious for whooping niggas in, at shows and shit. Every time we talk to somebody, you always, you always get brought up as knocking a nigga out at a show or something. I think Jay Stalin said, he was telling a story, and he said you had knocked a nigga out that night. Kilo said the same thing. It's just like niggas just be like out of pocket on the visit. Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, but that's what it is. You know, we 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 artists, and then that's what motherfuckers look at. Oh, they rappers, and then you know, niggas just street niggas. They gonna test. They think niggas just be rappers. Right, but right, we just right. not rappers. Right, like, you right. know, that's what they 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 finally start finding out about this music shit, this rap shit. <laughs> that these niggas life. really be from right. neighborhoods. Really, really street yeah, really. Right. And we came from that. We know we cut from that cloth. Like that's one of my nickname in my neighborhood is Hurt. Short right. for Hercules, oh, okay. short for I will beat the fuck okay. out of you, right. period. Like, that's how I get in. I liked it to fight. I was the right. kid that liked to fight. Like, fight where? Who, right. what? Right. Let's do right. it. Right there. I'm with all that shit. So that was my, that was, that was my role in, in my crew. That was my role in my hood. I'm the fighter. Like, right. yeah, you want to fight? Uh, we got somebody to fight you. Right now. Hurt. <laughs> oh, yeah, come on. So that, that's me. I like the fights. I, yeah, I knock yeah. niggas out for sure. That was my game. Okay, so you, it looks like you always keep yourself in good shape. Like you always been hub since a young mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I get it from pops. Pops was thick. You know, that's 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 just the digs frame. Right, right. Yeah, all the men in my family pretty much thick. Commercial break. Yeah, it's good. Get y'all some Mac Drake Thizzle Pop. Uh, <laughs> dig, get it. Nah, I'll fuck with you. But what was the question now? Um, yo, pops, he was an athlete or something, or he was just he was just he did all shit. He ran something. track, he did all the okay. shit, but he didn't take it past high school. Right, but he, right, he right. always had nice size on him, all right. shit. You ain't never played like any type of sports, huh? Yeah, I played all the shit. I did all the shit. I played. I, you know, I wanted to be the football player and all the shit, but I, you know, I didn't have that super talent. Right. Great drug dealer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so. How old are you? How old are you when you start selling drugs? Uh, shit. I probably sold my first dope at probably like fourteen. Okay. That's right around the time about 14, 15, I bought my car, my first car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right around 14 when I first dabbed and experimented, right. caught my first case at 16. That's when moms found out. And see, I didn't have the kind of mama where it was good. Yeah. Go ahead and right. go on sell some dope. You bring some money home. She, she didn't play that shit. Me. Oh, man, play hell now. My right. mom didn't play that shit. She would put my ass to sleep. Right. What the fuck was you bring right. no drugs in my house? Yeah, so I had to sneak. I was a sneak, right. you know. I had, I did all the shit. Bought my first car without no bikes. Park my car around the corner. Shit, mm -hmm. take all my little chains and shit off. Put it in the glove compartment. Ooh, park my car. Come on home like I ain't did nothing. You know, make moms go to sleep. Sneak out the window. Get right in the streets. Go jump in my car. Put my shit back on. 
Yeah, I did that shit. I did that for a while. Yeah. So when did y'all come together to start making music? Like, as everybody in the crowd? Like, everybody well, you rocking with? Well, our thing was, you know, you know, um, uh, my, my, my cutie, the Mac, he opened the door for it. And it, it became, it was a, a domino effect. You know what I mean? You, you, you passed the ball. When, when Dre got the ball and Dre was rapping, you know, everybody, you knew about the romper room. You didn't know in depth. Right, right. But when Dre first came out, he spoke about his crew, the mm -hmm. romper room. And he told, yeah, my homeboy Jay and Kilo top, and top, right? Ronnie Wags. And he speak, and he told all the different names of, of niggas in our crew. And what that do is that make fans start tapping yeah, in like right. that's how y'all know who kilo is because y'all right, right. used to hear kilo name and right. mac dre song. Ask kilo he know exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. so what, what happened was with this independent game we had a piggyback effect and the piggyback effect was you pass the ball you know when you a rapper and you on you pass it to your homeboys mm -hmm. and that's what dre did with us see dre wasn't um i don't know if you pay attention to dre music you're not going to hear no mainstream artists you're not even going to hear no lot of different rappers right. on Dre. You're going to hear who Dre fuck with on right. this music. Mm -hmm. If you listen to 10 Dre CDs, you're going to hear Cuddy's from the crest. Right. We didn't We didn't have, when Dre was rapping, you couldn't send no email and send a nigga no music. Right, that right. shit didn't exist. If you wasn't in the studio with Mac Dre, you didn't have a Mac Dre song. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Period. That's how it was. So we would be on the songs because we was right there next to him. So that's why I got 10, 12 songs with Mac Dre because right. I was with him every day. If, if you you can count the number, the, probably the biggest artist Dre ever had on a song, he got a song with Too Short. Right. You feel me? Yeah. And it wasn't because that he didn't fuck with everybody. There's plenty of rappers that he would have did songs with, but because of the way the game was designed, he never got a chance to work with those artists. Right. Because like I said, you couldn't just call it. They can say, hey, bro, I'm going to sing you this beat. Do this yeah. verse and send it back. It was different. Nah, it was different. You had to be in the, in the studio with him. So Dre had his niggas on his songs. Right. He didn't fuck with everybody. It's, oh. a, lot, it's a lot of motherfuckers out here holiday fuck with Mac Dre. They, right, they wasn't going to run. Dre didn't mm -hmm. fuck with them How at all. How old was you when you met Dre? Uh, I met Dre. I was 16. 16 when Dre around. Dre came to our neighborhood. Ronnie, Ronnie Wags. Ronnie Wags and E.B. Them the Cuddies, they really started this romper room shit, and and they went to they, uh to Hogan High at the high school. You went to Hogan? No, I went to Vallejo High. Okay. They went to Hogan. Dre went to Hogan, so they got close to Dre at the high school, and um and they brought Dre to the ghetto. Dre was Dre was a funny nigga, cool nigga. So they 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 brought Dre to the ghetto's kids, young, like around sixteen, and um really vibe. You know, Dre really vibe with with with. with with the, with the Cuddies, like he was like, yeah, this is where I need to be. And so when he brought when they when they brought Dre to the hood, you know, he he fit right in. Everybody accepted him. Everybody loved him. He tapped right in with everybody, and he just really became one of us. Like, right. period. That's just what it was. Mm -hmm. um, so we was about yeah about <clears throat> sixteen, sixteen, fresh high school, ninth, tenth grade, somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. And by that time, he was already like real serious with it rapping. No, I knew how to rap, but I wasn't okay. serious with rapping. No, Dre was serious. That's why we got behind Dre. Dre okay. took Dre took the rap game serious. I took the streets serious. Right. I right. was really in the streets. Like I so dope. I knew that I could make five hundred dollars a day selling dope Come as on. a teenager. It was guaranteed. so that was my focus. Dude, could you would you say that what made you stop selling dope was you hitting the banks or? And you still doing both? Yeah, actually, bank, bank, bank money just was so much faster. Like right. I was, I was sell dope, and you know that was just I had that was what I did. That was just that was the hood. I get up, right. I had the sack, and it was new. But when I start hitting licks with bank money, it went from having a couple thousand, two, three thousand. You know, as a kid, you felt like you was balling, but nice. you hit a bank and you come back and and you split thirty thousand, you. You and one other person, you sitting on 15 bands this week, and then two, three days later, you hit another lick, and now you got another 15, 20, and y'all split. Them numbers start adding up different. That's a different bracket. And he was like, shit. you get lazy about a lot of shit. Like, mm -hmm. at first, when I first hit my lick, that's the first thing I did. I went to bought hella dope. I was like, oh, shit, this song. Mm -hmm. I went to bought hella dope. And I was like, well, what the mm -hmm. fuck? That's backwards. Mm -hmm. I just went and robbed this mm -hmm. bank. Mm -hmm. They spent the bank money to buy some dope. Now that's a double risk right, right. to get. So I was like, man, fuck it. I'm finna 
go all in with this robbery shit. So I had turned robbery had turned into the this is what I do. Career. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. like when I get up when I want to, go to sleep when I want to, and if I need some money, I know right where to go get it. Come on. <laughs> yeah. that was, so that be that became, you know, and I was a kid, like I said, that became it was like shit. It was a adrenaline rush. It was a challenge. You know kind of I mean? like that same adrenaline rush when you got when you when you was fighting when you was a little nigga. Yeah, but it was a challenge. It was it was like just like even Kilo Kurt said it. You know, you guys were actually living the rap, so it was it, it was even actually you know it, it, was, it made it more authentic. You know, than mm-hmm. what a lot of people are putting out right now is just basically a bunch of bullshit. You know, yeah, you say anything it, first thing come to mind, yeah. off the top of their head. Yeah, it was definitely a different. It was a different time, different life. What was the first song you made with Dre? The first song I made with Dre was um, it's actually on the, um, on me and Dre the Dre Diggs album. It was, it was called Romped Out. Okay. It was called Romped Out. And it was a song when I got off the feds. Um, Dre had already been out. Dre was out like five years. I had to do 10. He did five years. So he was already out. He was back on his shit. You know, he, was, he had shit out. So I had just came home. And um, when I first came home, he came and got me from the halfway house. We went to Hot August Night immediately. It was lit. Same, yep, the same day. I, the same day I got released from the halfway house. It was the first night of hot August night of that year. It was uh, 2001. And so he picked me up from the halfway house and we went straight to um, hot August night. Crazy. That's when I first I realized how big Dre Happy got. Because prior to that, Dre had never did but one show that was halfway big. Mm-hmm. And that was the Fresno show. We went to jail. So I get out. And I go to Hot August Night with Dre. I just get out of prison and we walking down the street and everybody's, Mac Dre, oh my God, that's Mac Dre. And I'm looking, I'm like, what the fuck? (laughs) I'm looking around, these is white kids. Right, right. These are Mexicans. How do you need to know Dre? I'm like, Mm -hmm. man, what the fuck is going on? We from the crash, you know. When when we went to prison, Dre had a little buzz and it was just from tapes. It wasn't that big, so... Here it is. I come home ten years later, and I'm walking down the street with him, and all these young kids just, oh my God, that's Matt Dre, oh Matt Dre, Matt Dre. That's crazy. And I'm like looking, like wow, that's that blew crazy. your mind up. Yeah, like crazy. Hey, you, you, you a rapper, rapper. Mm. Right. He like, yeah, hey, this shit different. He like, hey, we fucking with it. So when I seen that, that automatically changed my passion. I'm like, okay, this is what we doing then. Because right, 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 first right. I come on like, we just did ten years in prison. Like, what, what we doing? What's right, the move? Right. How we gonna get on? We, Yep. Get us some dope. We back hitting licks. What we doing? Yep. Yeah. What we gonna do? So, when I got home and I seen that he was really Mac Dre the rapper, I fell in line. Like, bro, look, I'm gonna play my part. You do this rap shit. I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do to keep us on our game too. So I just fell in line. You know what I mean? I fell in line. I watched him and took his advice on the rap game. You know what I mean? He would tell me what to do with the music because I wanted to do music too. So he would give me advice on the rap shit. And, and of course, you know, he was my big homie on the rap shit. I was his big homie on the street shit. So, and that's what he came down to. Like we was, we was friends. Like he wasn't my boss. None of that shit. A lot of people think, oh, that was the, mm-hmm. the, the head of the romper. He was not the head of the romper room crew or none of that shit. We didn't rock like that. You feel me? He was the cutty. He was the most popular member in the romper room crew, but he was not the head of the romper room crew. We was all a crew. We ran together. Sure. We ate together. We did all the shit. I would argue with Dre just as quick as I would argue with Kilo. And if Dre didn't get the last word, mm-hmm. I didn't get the last word. It was whoever. You that know was like I mean? brothers. We were brothers. That's how it was. So a lot of people had got that that, that misreception that, oh, they, he was the boss or he was y'all. No, that's not what he was. He was our friend. And we rocked out together and we looked out for each other. Our job was to make sure he stayed out of trouble and stayed on his rap shit to get us to the top. Right. And then I dropped the ball when we caught the case because it really was my fault that the informant was the nigga that I fucked with who got us all caught up. So Who got y'all caught up? Uh, it was a foreman named Corey Dunn. Mm, okay. he, was a, he, was a, he was a car thief nigga. So when when that happened, you know, of course, I'm going to feel bad. Dre had a deal on the table. Dre was could have signed with Chive Records, but then he catch a case with his homeboys, which is me, and he had a choice. They got at him like, bro, you know, just tell us that Kilo and Diggs was right. robbing the banks. We already know it. Right, right, right. But we need you to go ahead and seal the deal. You go, you go on home and do your deal and shit. And all the shit. He had a choice. He could have did it. He could have right there and he could have said, okay, come on, man. Give me the paper. I'm going to sign. Get me out of here. But he did. He stayed solid. He went to trial. He stayed on trial. We sat just like this, three. Through a full trial. And him knowing that he never robbed nothing, knowing that he never was a part of nothing, 
robbing nothing. But his only crime was these two dudes is your homeboys and you know that they rob shit. Mm -hmm. There's different times you know that they rob shit and you didn't inform the police officer. It's called conspiracy. So Dre was convicted of conspiracy to commit armed bank robbery when they knew that he wasn't going to rob a bank. They just knew that he knew mm -hmm. that his homeboys robbed banks. Oh, yeah. So that's why I go so hard for Dre. People be like, man, you go hella hard for Dre. I'm like, bro, you wouldn't even understand the story. Right. He gave his life up for me when he had a, 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 a solidified career. And he could have easily said, you know what? Them niggas was finna rob their bank. Y'all know that. Y'all seen the surveillance. I was in the car going to fuck with some bitches. I don't got time for this shit. Do what y'all gonna do, but let me go. Mm -hmm. He could have did that easy. Mm -hmm. Of course, he wouldn't have got away with that shit like that. Yeah, <laughs> but, right. yeah but he could have got. A, he could have did that shit easy. And but he instead he stayed real. We should talk about it after court, Cuddy. I'm staying down, bro. I'm gonna mm -hmm. keep my mouth closed. Love you, niggas. We going back to our pod. I see y'all on the next court day. Period. Mm -hmm. So with that being said and especially in today's time you can't get you can't get that kind of loyalty from a motherfucker yeah. that's finna get a ticket <laughs> a motherfucker tell him a motherfucker get out of a ticket hey, that's yeah. your weed you take the weed man I'm not taking it man I gotta go to work tomorrow yeah. you know these niggas is crazy yeah. <laughs> so yeah he, he gave up his whole life behind his crew though like literally yeah. literally went to federal pen knowing that he had never ever planned a robbery didn't have no parts of planning or nothing just for simple his crew so that's why J Diggs goes so hard for Mac Dre that's why this shit stamped on my body that's why I rep my nigga so hard from from, from day one to, to the end of time yeah. cause I watched my nigga give up his life for me when he didn't have to yeah. and that's I mean that's why us as fans also I feel like that's what makes a you know Mac Dre so so real just because everybody knows the story about behind yeah, what, what happened with it and it makes him certified you feel me and that's why Mac Dre shit word yeah. means a lot and raps mean a lot because you know it's real shit mm -hmm. and you like he said real before rap come on what's one thing you miss about Dre it could be anything from his personality his swag like just but just being a, being a funny dude he was man dude was a lot of people don't know he's a character more than anything like Dre was really probably could have been a comedian <laughs> If he wasn't rapping, like he was just a funny dude. Like we had we had different nicknames. Like even his nickname itself. Like Mr. Furley, a lot of people don't know. His his nickname is Furley. Do you know who Mr. Furley is? There's some people at home who know who Mr. Furley. Exactly. So if you know who Mr. Furley is, you know he was a goofy dude. That's that was Don Knotts. His whole character was goofy. Like Dre Dre had a goofy side that a lot of people didn't know. And that's why we called him Furley. My other homeboy, Ray Ray, not named him that because Dre would get in the car and knock over some shit. And be like, man, what the fuck, Dre? Oh, cut him up, man. And so a lot of people don't know that side of that. They don't, they don't know where some of these characters come from. Mm -hmm. They don't know. So Furley, Furley was the Don Knox. That was a comedian side to Dre. That was his funny, goofy side that a lot of people, the fans didn't even know about. That You had to be a cutty to know where that came from. But so Dre, Dre was really a, a comedian. Me and Dre lived together. Like, see, that's a lot of people don't know that. When, when Dre passed away, we, we actually, right here in this city, Sacramento, we had, a, um, we had a condo and we had a house. The condo was called Rapper's Island. A lot of people think um, Hawaii is Rapper's Island. Hawaii is not Rapper's Island. Rapper's Island was a, a, a condo complex out here in Sacramento. Yeah, we named it Rapper's Island because everybody used to come over there and record with us. I'm, it's right on the top of my tongue. So. That's why your baby mama's always crying. Yeah. <laughs> because people be at Rapper's Stop Island lying. recording. Uh. You ain't been to Rapper's <laughs> Island. Yeah, so that was that was the condo complex um, uh, on the lake. What's the one with the, got the little fucking um, paddle boats in the middle of it? Uh, Green Haven on the lake. That's what it is. Green Haven on the lake off the five. So that was with Rapper's Island. It was really a condo. We had a three-bedroom condo that sat on the, um, a little lake, a little man-made lake. So when you came outside the condo, it had the lake. It had paddle boats and all the mm -hmm. shit. So everybody would come over. The, the, the few rappers that we did fuck with and did songs with, they would come over to the condo. We had the condo. We had a spare bedroom. That was the studio and all the shit. A lot of the shit that y'all hear was recorded in that condo. It wasn't even in no booth or nothing. Like Just really in the condo with a mic. And all the shit, and that was Rapper's Island. Mm. That was Rapper's Island. That's where some terrible everybody used to be at. Used some to come terrible. From. Tell them I was done. Hey. Yeah. How, what's your favorite song you ever made with Dre? Um, uh, my favorite Dre song would probably be "Romped Out." Romped Out. Because it was the first song. It was the first mm -hmm. song that I, that we made when I came home. Like we got a few songs, you know. But it was the first song that we made when I got out of prison. 
And I just was excited to be home in the studio and all the shit. And so, when it was, you know, you niggas better watch out. Guess who just got out? Rumble hey. room niggas is back. So that was that was that was that was just like our return mm -hmm. for me. That was that was the return of my life after ten years in prison. So I was really okay. back in the studio. Mm -hmm. I had been I had been rapping for years, doing songs and shit in prison performing in front of prisoners and all the shit <laughs> and then I finally was home in the studio making a real song with a real rapper like damn this shit finna really happen That's so that that would have been the one because that was really just an exciting time in my life fresh out of prison for real Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Everywhere you go, where digs at, you're always pushing the different types of products you got. You got the syrup. You got anything new coming in 2020? Uh, well, for, the, for, the, for this year, more than anything, I'm concentrating more on um, just my book and my movie. Them is the mm -hmm. biggest movements. Of course, okay. I do got my CBD syrup, THC syrup. I got flour. I got a whole movie. How's that going? Oh, it's great. It's excellent. It's excellent. You know, I, I just I that. just rebirthed the company. My company, Breeze Alive. BreezeAlive.com. Y'all tap in. That's my CBD company. You know, um, and that was, that's that's just my movement right now. You know, I'm on the CBD movement real tough ever since losing my son um, behind that promethazine with codeine shit. You know, I don't fuck with that syrup shit, mm -hmm. that other shit. So I go hard. I go hard for the CBD shit. It's a whole nother movement that I've been pushing for the last five years, okay. for real. How many kids you got? I got 10. Oh, well, you got the, le hey, that's legacy it's right there. Deep. Right? <laughs> Come on. 10 deep. And every last one of them name is J. Diggs. Yeah, well, get that fucked up. Every Come last on. one yeah. of them. Yeah. Even the girls, huh? Yep. Jada, Jayla, and Jada got Come three on. daughters. Jada, Jayla, and Jada. Hmm. And you could tell their boyfriend that their daddy's a hater. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. What city was y'all was y'all shooting them in the Bay? The Trill TV episodes? Yeah, we shot all of the Bay, all of, basically all over Northern California, oh. and then um, we shot out to Portland, Seattle, Kansas City, Miami. We shot a little bit everywhere, but that was the whole thing. Basically, wherever we had fans at, we was on the road, pulled up with the camera out. Right. And this was prior to the social media hype and all the shit. This was DVDs. You had to get your DVD, pop your DVD in and watch that shit. You couldn't go online right. and catch that shit. <laughs> I wish we had the shit we had right now, though, back then. If we'd have had some motherfucking Instagram when the hyphy movement was going on, Come you, you could have just did that shit back then. Yeah. Boy, y'all would have seen, <laughs> seen some shit. You and Judy. Y'all would have seen some shit. Yeah, bro, we got we in the lost files, bro. It's some, it's some footage out there, though. But it ain't a lot, bro. Well, I, I wish I wish we had with, with with the technology they got now. I seen you did the um on one of those true TVs. You did the Big Meech and the BMF family with the whole thing. Oh yeah, like, yeah. How, was, how, how did you meet up with that whole squad of people? Um, and, um it's crazy because I was in Miami in two thousand. Uh, I think it was two thousand four, three or four. And um, this one, this one BMF was at their peak. Right? That's when Meech Meech had a house in Miami at the time. I was out there, me and Yuck Mouth had went down there, and that's what I was doing. We were shooting Trill TV too, me, mm -hmm. Yuck Mouth, Cuzzle, Fly, a few other dudes. And um, BMF was hosting, they was hosting on parties on South Beach at a club called Crowbar. So they was selling shit out, like everybody was trying to get to their party, everybody wanted to get around BMF, BMF, that's all the talk was. I was sliding through on a moped, and everybody was outside, and I heard somebody like, that's Jay Diggs. <laughs> Diggs, Diggs. I said, hell, the niggas was in black shirts, BMF shirts. I bust a U-turn. They was like, Diggs, what's up with it? So I pull over there. I'm looking, and it's all BMF niggas. Mm -hmm. I didn't know none, none of the niggas in the crew. You know what I mean? I had heard the name and all the shit, but I didn't really know them at the time. So they're like, man, we fuck with you, Diggs. I mean, the boss want to meet you, blah, blah, blah. So the, at the time, was my dude. His name was Big Cuz. He was one of the uh, BMF members from L.A., and um, they really had got on us through Trill Television One. Okay. Yeah. They was they was they was on the East Coast and they got a hold of Trill Television One and was really watching and really fucked with it. So that's how they knew who I was. Hell from, yeah. From, from from the first one and they was they was tapping into our movement. So um, they ended up inviting me over to the match and I ended up it's crazy. That's I had um I was I had my first album had just dropped. It wasn't that popular and none of the shit. Mm -hmm. Um and um they had invited me over to the match and. I was only supposed to be in Miami four days, four or five days. I went out there with the crew, took like six girls with me. We all went out there, had a fall. We fucked Miami up. 
maybe seven. <laughs> uh, yeah, real shit. As a matter of fact, it was seven. And um, so we doing all the shit. This was back when, and, and uh, when them, in them times, it money was, was good. Yeah, right. it, was, it was digs doing moving. So um, I ended up going over to the mansion, and um, me and Blue Da Vinci start recording. Um, I had hooked up with their producer at the time. His name was S Dog. S Dog was super dope. He was making beats for Jeezy. This was when they, at the time, they was pushing Jeezy movement. Mm -hmm. Jeezy wasn't all the way on yet. He was just finna finna blow so they was pushing this movement running through the clubs playing this music and all the shit so like I say I was supposed to be in Miami for four days I fucked around and was in Miami for like three months oh shit I'm just at the mansion yeah, every day months. bro I, I actually started my um, my second album the album that put me on what, what, what made motherfuckers respect me in the music game was uh, California Living 2 so I did that event. The, the first song when you after when it came on, it came on to a song I had called Mrs. California, but then it go right into a song called Really Not a Rapper. I really and, in the street with it. Yeah. Oh, so that song right there was the was the first song when people took me serious in the music game. But I I did that song in Miami at Meek House. If you listen mm. to the hook, it says, um, I'm really not a rapper, real real street with it. All I did was take my life and mix a little beat with it. Mm -hmm. And I say, um, I need my niggas and bitches to help me rap that. They made the call, y'all. Mm -hmm. They went the West back. Okay. S Dog digs a BMF, BMF track. track. They made yeah. it. That was back in two thousand four. Yeah. 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 yeah, so yeah. so and um, so I, they had never been to the Bay Area. I had ended up um, me and we and Blue in two thousand and six. Blue had hit me and Misha had ended up going to jail. You know we we well, by then we close. We fucking with it. Blue had hit me for his tour. Like I'm finna do this tour. I got this deal with Koch Records. You mm -hmm. feel me? I'm going around the country. Come fuck with me. I'm like, okay, bet, let's do it, boo. So me, all my bitches packed up when he got on the tour. 20 niggas from BMF, and we hit the whole country. Like, we started at the Super Bowl in Detroit, and, and that was the first That was the first takeoff from the tour. From there, we hit That's dope. Ohio, New York. We went everywhere, bro. Chicago, shot down to um, Texas for All-Star Weekend. Did it was All Star Weekend was in Houston that year in 2006. Did that, did a Black College Week, Spring Bling, Miami. We did the whole country and we ended the tour right here in the Bay. Mm -hmm. And by the time we had ended the tour, all the indictments had came out on all the BMF niggas. So niggas was already hell niggas that went to jail and they were still looking for something. They was looking for Blue. And I ended up letting Blue and a couple other dudes come stay with me in the Bay. I had a house at the time, I had a house in Antioch. Mm -hmm. I had a house in Antioch off a uh, railroad or Love Tree, whatever the fuck, Long Tree. <laughs> Long Tree. Long Tree. I had a house so we was out yeah. there. So I had BMF out there, and we was you know tucking, ducking, and getting around. And um, they fucked around and caught up to Blue in Vegas, and he ended up going down in Vegas. But yeah, that was that was that was definitely a movement, man. I fuck with the mob. Oh, I yeah. fuck with the mob. Tough. Meet you, call me from jail every now and then. We would tap in. Okay, that's what's up. How about the Jack? Oh, you know that's crazy too, man. Because that's me and um, me and Jack. A week before Jack passed, he was at my house in Vegas. Uh -huh. We um, I actually got a full J Diggs Jack album. Like we was working on the album. It's really done, mm -hmm. and um, okay. I just never did nothing with it. Like I, I, I released one song off of it. I put out um, on my California Living Three album. It's called Danger Zone. But basically, I got a whole archive. Oh, yeah. J. Diggs and Jack is unreleased. I don't know. I might release it 2040. Yeah, we'll <laughs> I don't know. You we'll never... be ready for it, though. We're going to be ready for it. You, <laughs> you know, never know, man. I don't know. I might not never release it. It might just be my personal Jack and J. Diggs <laughs> album. See, why not? You feel yeah, me? I don't know. Really. But I got it, though. I got any, it. Any, any good memories with the, with the Jack? Yeah. I mean, I got clean memories of Jack, man. But you know, he 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 a fun dude. Anybody know Jack? Jack just was, you know, that's all he was. He was just mm -hmm. his energy was just different. Like he wasn't one of them, one of them down dudes. He was he was one of the fun dudes. Just period, bro. Mm -hmm. So so me and him, we did we did a lot of shit together. We did a lot of shows together. We fucked it up. We did a video in Fairfield that was super dope. This motherfucker had us shooting at five in the morning. Mm -hmm. Like it was me, Filthy, and Jacka. The, um, we were shooting a video, um, You Should Know Me. It was a mm -hmm. song off one of my old, older albums. <laughs> I think we started this video shooting about 10 o'clock. And I'm talking to Jack. Jack said, yeah, I'm on my way right now. I'll be there in an hour, Diggs. 
So I'm telling, I'm telling bro Jackson, like, okay, filthy, filthy. Finna and this pull the one up. you was talking about, right? You was telling us like Jackson had this out there all night. Filthy finna pull up, bro. I'm here, we shooting, boo. Filthy get there, bro. This motherfucker Jacka told me he was an hour away five times. Every time I call, like, bro, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be there, an hour, I'll be there, an hour. What was that nigga doing? What was he really doing, bro? bro I <laughs> Who still knows, huh? That motherfucker got there like five in the morning when we shot that scene. <laughs> For you should know me. And this scene was outside in the backyard of the fool. Like, literally, bro, we started shooting probably like 9 or 10 o'clock. Jack did not get there till 5 in the morning. That's nice. But that's how he moved, though. Jack moved. You know, he be on his time. He don't, he don't, he don't mean no harm. Yeah. He like, man, we going to get it done. That's my dude, though. Now, y'all he make can't... some classic shit. Y'all make some classic shit. Yeah, that's definitely my dude, bro. We fucked with it. What, didn't you make that song She My Go or something like that? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. Did you make that? I made uh, She My Go. Oh, what had it had to be. That had to be about, I don't know, maybe 2007. You know, it's okay. crazy because the dude who made that beat, he don't even make beats no more. He's a, uh, he's a, uh, he's a video guy. His name Square. is Jay, Jay <laughs> Scent. Jay Scent Square. Jay Scent okay. was a producer back then. A lot of people don't even know this. I just seen him the other day. We talked about this. That's crazy because mm-hmm. you asked me that. But Jay Scent had made that beat. And it actually wasn't even my song. It was a, it was another dude, uh, uh, Skrill, a dude from Sacramento. He had just called me. And he had came, you know, paid me to come do a verse. So I came in. It was me, five, six of my bitches. It was all in the studio. <laughs> and um, they on the song. That's them. I say, what, what that mean? Mm-hmm. So he had just threw the beat on. He didn't have no concept. He didn't know what he wanted to do or nothing. We was all there. I think we had a show that night or something. Mm-hmm. So we had all came in there. So I was had to come up with something. He was just like, man, Diggs, wherever you go with it. And, um, I, I don't, even to this day, I don't even know. Like, she might go. I used to, uh, I, I, I took that as a saying because I used to be like, I, you know, I was a pimp back right, in the right, days. Right, right. You know, I, I don't do that no more. Right. But I was a pimp back in the days. So I used to, when I used to see bitches that, that looked like they might fit my description, she might or, go. yeah, I, I would say she might go. Uh-huh. Right, right. But I say it kind of fast. She might go. Like, uh, basically said, she might go and get some money. Right, right. So, she I, able, she so I start speeding it up. She might go. She might go. All right. So I would see bitches, and I might tap my bitch and look at her, like, what you think? And, she, and my bitch might say, oh, she might go. So I turned that into, she might go. So we was in the studio, and and and, and people would ask me that. When we would say it fast around each other, I like I might say it around my bitch. It's just an inside joke with me and her. I might say, she might go. And she say she might go in there like you looking like man what that mean? Uh, <laughs> so when we was in the studio and that beat came on, that's what I did. I took the she might go and I turned it into like an Asia and I said Ima, she might go. What that mean? You wanna be my hoe? And, and basically that's what and so that's how that song came about. We had fun with it. I took the girls in there. They all on the, they all on the hook. They all what that mean? We just funny, yeah. yeah we had fun in the studio and. And then um, we just ran with it, bro. And it was crazy because that became a real popular song. That became a real popular song. But then that's one something that I noticed about music after a while. If you really listen to music, people really like songs where people not saying shit. Yeah. When you go to boobop, boobop, boobop in the song, mm-hmm. that'd be the favorite part in people's song. Like, simple it, shit. Yeah, simple yeah. shit. And, 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 and that was just one of them ones. Like my song I had too called Bomb Bomb in the day. Same uh-huh. shit, you know. I'm not even... It'd be certain shit that people just like catchy shit, I guess. Right. But but she my go became a very very catchy phrase. It's one of them songs and one of them words that just ran with me through my whole career. You know, bitches hit me in my inbox. She my go. Yeah. I know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, you made a song. You was talking about something. You was like, if you see J. Quan, slap the little punk. Jaquan, y'all remember Jaquan? Tipsy, everybody in the club get tipsy. <laughs> what was that about, bro? Oh man, that was uh, <laughs> Jaquan. So, so, so my Jaquan story. We source awards. Uh, matter of fact, same year as the BMF, Miami source awards. Me and Yuck Moth down there. Um, so, this was in your know, early, early these days. And um, this is back when Jay Quan was on with that song, Tipsy and all the shit. So we was we we in Miami, we backstage the Source Awards. I'm already backstage. I'm back right. there, me, yeah, we back there fucking with it. But I had some partners that had pulled up and they wanted to get in. So I'm trying to find them some passes. So I see I see uh Jay Quan and he had like two, three bodyguards with him. But one of the bodyguards had like four or five passes, like right. had all eight passes. 
he was on right then. He was hot back then. Right. People knew who he was. He didn't need to have no passes. His bodyguards, big motherfuckers. Wasn't nobody right. tripping off of him. So I was like, okay, this might be the move I need. So I get yeah. at him. I cut into him. Jay, what's up with them passes? Man, I got my peoples outside trying to get in. Let me give you something for them passes. He was like, okay, come throw me something. Right. I, you know, do some nigga shit. Go in my pocket, okay. Peel the nigga off a couple hundred dollars. Here. Right. Nigga looked at me like I had shit on my hand. I'm like... And I'm like, oh, you got to give me at least 500 a pass. So, like, mind you, we, we backstage. You already in. Man, when this nigga said this, man, it took everything in me not to haul right. back and slap the dog shit out of him. Like, right. who the fuck are you, right. you talking to, right. bro? And looking at me like right. that at the same time. Like, nigga, who fuck you? So, you know, I took it personal. I took it personal. He, uh, you know, obviously he didn't know who I was. Just like, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't know who he was other than a nigga that rap. So... I, you know, I start telling him slick shit right then. Nigga, fuck you. Fuck your past, nigga. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, nigga, right. you can't come to the Bay Area. Right, right. You feel me? And that's how I left. And he looking at me like, yeah, nigga, so don't come out there. Don't think about coming out there. And I instantly went home. And I had made that song back then. Mm -hmm. um, it was me, 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 yuck, and kick the sneak. Uh, I ride me. I ride me. Yeah, I got right on that nigga head, man. And I meant it. It was crazy because fans was with it, too. They were digs. He can't come here. Well, I don't give a fuck. No Jaquan here. We don't give a fuck. Right. And that's how it was, bro. He never mm -hmm. came here, either. But I ain't got no problem with you, man. I was just in my feelings the way he carried me. You feel me? I felt like, man, I'm a boss. You don't get at me like that. And, if, sure. you know, and like I said, you already in, nigga. Like, you know, come on, bro. You making some free money as it was. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you looked at me crazy, nigga. Don't play with me. Come on. <laughs> So yeah, that was my Jay Quan story though. He good. He come to the bay now. What about what's up with Messi Marvin though? Who? Who? I don't even know who that is. Oh shit! Like, what was the, one of the maniest prison experiences you had? You know what I mean? You know, one of one of the um one of one of the crazy things that I did see in prison is. This, this was this, this what made me look at that gang banging shit a lot different. You feel me? You know, cause where, I, where I'm from, bro, we don't bang. You know, we 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 we, we rock neighborhoods. Right. But I was in Terminal Island Federal Prison, which is in the heart of uh, uh, of Southern California. So it wasn't nothing but Crips, Bloods, Northanios, Serranos in the Bay Area, which we was considered called up north, meaning everything north of everything north of Bakersfield was up under my car. So, while I was in there, you know, this was my first time really interacting with real Crips and Bloods on a daily. I'm young, 18, 19, 19 years old. So, I remember, um, I had a partner in there, he was from, um, he was from Fo Deuce, Fo Deuce Hoover Crip. Mm -hmm. I remember him, uh, he had got the call that his brother had got killed. So he was crying, he was fucked up. And um, probably about, maybe about three weeks later, two, three weeks later, um, a bus came on the yard. A bus came with a whole bunch of new inmates. And this one young dude, young black dude, got off the bus. Might have been 20 years old. He got off the bus. He came in through regular routine, got his clothes, went to his bunk. He was tired off the bus. He had been on the bus all day. I seen him when he came in. He was so tired, he just put his, threw his shit up on his bunk and jumped on his bunk, laid down and went to sleep. About 45 minutes after he was asleep, he was getting woke up with a knife, getting stuck in it. So I seen him looking, I'm from my bed area and I'm watching, I watched my dude, I watched my dude run up on him and just, he on the top bunk, just start serving him. Just hitting him with the knife. So this dude wake up, ah! Out of sleep, screaming, ah, ah, ah! Blood hitting the wall. My dude chasing him all down the hallway. He came off the bed. He running. He don't even know what's going on. Yeah, bro. Yeah, he's just imagine up. you sleep, yeah. and he yeah. just getting hit all in the bing, side. Bing, ah. bing. Blood all in the wall. He running, hitting the wall. You know what I mean? I'm watching. I just watching the whole shit. It's not my business to get in, so I'm yeah. watching the whole shit. And then after it was all over, um, dude go to the infirmary. They come back and they go get um. My partner C Rod, he ended up going to the hoe. So, of course, I'm trying to find out the backstory. What happened? What the fuck? Why did C Rod get on that nigga? You know the nigga from the store, mm -hmm. the streets? 
And what had ended up happening was C Rod brother had got killed from another gang. I believe it was the gang was thirties or something in LA. Mm -hmm. And at the time when his brother got killed, there was no thirties on the yard. There was nobody from thirties on the yard. When that bus came in, it was a young dude from thirties on that bus. But he had been in jail. He had nothing to do with it. He didn't even know C Rod. Mm -hmm. They didn't know each other. C Rod didn't know him. It was nothing. It was just he from that Man, neighborhood. Yeah. They killed his brother. And the quickest dude jumped off the bus mm -hmm. and jumped on his bunk. C Rod was on him. And I was like, boy, it's a cold game. It's a cold game when it should follow you to prison like that. Like you can you know, at the time, like, you know, he could have been on anything. Mm -hmm. He could have been and gave his life to a whole nother higher power, but it didn't matter no more. Yeah. It didn't matter. He never knew it was coming. He didn't know. To this day, he might not know why a motherfucker ran up on him in his sleep mm -hmm. and got the stuff and the knife up in him. And I watched that shit, and I'm like, wow. Anybody try to get at you like that while you was there? I mean, not not like that. I ain't, I ain't never been stabbed. I ain't never been I ain't never been touched. I ain't never been touched while I was in prison physically like that. Nobody put their hands on me. Um, I had incidents for sure. I had incidents for sure. There were times motherfuckers that wanted to do shit. We didn't have Mexican standoffs, knives, and everything. Where at any given second, it was finna be all out war. That didn't even that didn't that didn't penetrate. So yeah, I've been in a lot of circumstances, but I was in there for ten years. So I, 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 shit, huh? I seen it all. I seen anything and everything you can imagine in, in, inside a federal prison. Um, I was lucky. I'm not gonna lie. I was one of the lucky ones, you know, especially at the level of, of the game I played because I played all in. Right, right. I wasn't no square in prison. I didn't, you know, I was in everything. I came uh -huh. in young, so I, I, I was a young wild nigga when I came in. And by the time I was on my third year in, I was shot calling on the prison yard I was in. And from there on, that's all I knew. When I got to a yard, I got right down with the niggas that was on the yard getting some money, and I tapped in, and that was my movement. You feel me? And if you was in the Cali car, I don't care where I went across this country. When I hit the yard, I tapped in with the niggas who was running the Cali car, and we got an understanding on the yard that, hey, this is how we finna have this car going, because there was a lot of fuck shit going on. I got a lot of shit I didn't believe in. Like, one of the yeah. things about me, I got sent to prison behind a snitch. So my understanding was snitching is zero. Like, I give no snitches, no passes. Zero tolerance. I wouldn't give a fuck if it was my child. I'd right. kick his ass out this house. Right, right. If he tell on the man for some shit that he ain't got nothing to do with. Right. So that's just me. That's how I am. So um, I carried it like that in prison. I carried it like that in prison. I didn't, I didn't let niggas hide behind our car. I didn't do none of that shit if you was... If he was a rat, you got treated like one. So that's what I was known for on the yard. I was known for enforcing that type of shit. Like, digs don't play that shit. Where your paperwork at, you might want to go take that shit over there. Them niggas right there, because they want to see that shit. Right. So that I, 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 that's the type of inmate I was. And that's why I'm in the way I am on the streets. Niggas be like, oh, digs, why you be calling niggas out wrestling? Because, like, that's who I am. Like, nigga, especially in this area right here, I represent this Bay Area to the fullest. And niggas like, you know, you call yourself the boss of the bay. Not because I'm bossing niggas around. No, but I'm going to make a boss move. Anytime I see some fuck shit going on in this Bay Area, I'm going to make a boss move and I'm going to call it for what it is. You feel me? And, and a lot of times it, it might not even be my business, but it's my business to let the world know that, hey, that nigga right there is a rat. Right. And if I get foolproof on a nigga that's a rat, I'm going to tell it. Like, there's some niggas I'm doing my homework on right now. Some niggas in the Bay Area right now, you niggas is shaking. And I ain't gonna say no names yet because that work ain't here, but I've already requested it. And when they do get here, I'm not gonna be like some of these other niggas and tuck my tail. I'm gonna tell it. So you stay tuned. You stay tuned because there's some rappers that finna get busted out in the Bay Area. You niggas know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna just keep it like that. It's coming. It's coming. How old were you when you pop first popped the this? Um, 253 years old. <laughs> because I ain't never popped a thiz. Let me just oh, tell okay. you that. Me know I am the thizness nigga you know that never popped a pill. Period. President of the thiz nation shit. 
But yeah, anybody that know me, no digs don't do nothing. I ain't never tried a pill. I ain't never tried a line of cocaine, no hair run. I don't do nothing, my nigga. Yeah. I smoke weed. I tried weed one time when I was a young kid, and I ain't stopped. So I don't try nothing else that I might not stop. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's yeah. just me, period. Like, yeah, I haven't yeah. even tried shit. So yeah, yeah, during the whole hyphy movement, when everybody was on thizzing and, and doing their shit, I was behind my glasses watching you niggas watch my niggas. <laughs> right, period. Yeah. Yeah, on shit. So, yeah, I ain't never been on a right. pill ever in my life. I don't even know what it'll do. I don't, I don't, I don't know. No fact. Anybody yeah, know. They'll shit. tell you digs. Don't do none of that shit. Right. Man. Sure. I don't do no Is there a reason why? I just don't do nothing. It's like being on your toes. Yeah, me. I'm always on Come point, on. bro. I'm the only point Come guy on. in the crew. All Come on. Yeah, yeah, period. Like I just, I'm not. Like I say, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like being out of my body. I don't even drink. Like I'll have a drink, but once I start feeling like, mm, Man. nah, it's yeah. time to go. Get me home. Get me away from people. All the shit. I don't want to be. I gotta be on. I gotta be on point at all the times. Right? What, what's the type of things you like eating now? Like what's your diet like? Or you just be? Oh, uh, for real, for real. I'm, uh, if if a kid like it, I like it. And if I like it, a kid probably like, like that's I eat like a kid. Like I ain't even lie, I'm not no health nut or nothing. I've always ate like a kid. Yeah, yeah. Hamburgers, pizza, seafood. Like I eat what the fuck I want to, and that's why I be having it. I have to get back to the gym because I get out of control. But yeah, I'm, I, I eat for um, pleasure. Some people okay. eat to survive. Some people eat to not be full. And, yeah. Some people eat the gift. I eat yeah. for pleasure. Like yeah. I like my food. food. I, I look yeah. forward to eating. Right. Shit, I eat great. I go to the right. best of restaurants. Right. I get excited and shit sometimes. Yeah. Like damn, why right. motherfucker crab come out? Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. 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 I, I, I can say the same. I feel like yeah. it is my favorite part of the day. Yeah, I can't. I'm not the guy that can. Then, oh man, this is good for you. Just eat it because it's good for you. No, yeah, no, you bitch. Eat, I'm not like eating it. that. Right, bitch, right. you eat it. Right. I'm eating this Twinkie. <laughs> that motherfucker tastes good. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, heard, I heard that Jinx was vegan. That's what I heard. I ain't vegan. Nah, I'm just, I got a so, this vegan, but I'm not vegan. Like, what type of, what's, your, what's on your playlist right now? What type of music you listen to? Like, outside of rap? Or shit, fuck it, rap too. I, I, I don't really listen to too much outside of rap. Like, you know, I'm a hip hop baby. Right. Um, but it's crazy is that you know for real for real, I be I just be tapping in to just listen to. I don't got no like probably the number one shit that I probably listen to in my car right now right this second is Yo Gotti new shit. Okay. He talking some real shit. The Yo Gotti new shit is hard. So that's what I'm slapping right now. Just probably gonna repeat more than anything right now. Of course, I you know nip 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 this you know right. Yeah, for sure. He that guy, so I always get some good game from there. And, and, and that's my thing, you know what I mean? I'm not no kid, so I don't really get a lot of, out of the, the shit these youngsters right. is talking about. Like, a lot of that shit right. is, really, is really trash. Right, I'm going to make some good music, right. but I'm, I'm, really in, I'm really in the substance with music. Like, you know, I'm in the timeless music. I'm in the motherfuckers that can really talk some shit to me, right. can really educate me sometimes. Unless they have fun with music, for sure. Mm -hmm. But I can't listen to a bunch of bullshit all the time. You can't just keep bullshitting me yeah, all right. day, every song. A lot of these things ain't really doing yeah, I can't, yeah, I need right. to, at some point in time, you got to stimulate me right. uh, if you're a rapper. Right. I got to be able to say, okay, I relate. If I can't relate right. to your shit at all, right. then it's just, yeah. Why do people like your music so much? Why do you feel like that? Um, well, one of the things that I hear is because I'm a storyteller. A lot okay. of people like to hear the stories. You know, they like to hear some real shit. Like, they, like that's the thing about me. That's why my slogan is I'm really not a rapper. Because basically what you hear in my music is shit I go through. Right, right, right. That's why I make it so easy for me. Because right. I'm not a rapper. I don't really, I just take the shit yeah. in my life and I right. put it into a, a story yeah. form. Yeah. And I can make it rhyme. Yeah. You know, rappers, they do metaphors and slick shit. And you say, ooh, shit, yeah. what the fuck? Right. I can't do none of that shit. I'm man, not a Lil Wayne. Yeah. Like, them is rappers. Right, right, right. I'm not a rapper. Man, you be like, dropping bars. Cash like, Kid, that little motherfucker. Fucking raw, that's a rapper. Diggs be dropping, you be dropping bars. Hey, episode six, Untold Stories. Jake Diggs, you yeah, dig and we out of here. Yeah, yeah, we doing it moving. Peace. All right, y'all, see you on Diggs, man. <laughs> man, my nigga at the airport. That's it.